Hey friends, it's Brucky from sustainableprepping.com, your home for fear-free emergency preparedness on the internet. Today I am talking about building out your preparedness plan in concentric circles. This is going to be part one of a two-part video, and it's going to be leading us into our five-day challenge, which I'll tell you more about later. But this is a really exciting video because I think that we all need to have really concrete steps for building out our preparedness plan, and I'm going to be talking about them today. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad you found my slice of the internet. If you're not new, welcome back. I'm glad that you are returning once again. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you want more of this fear-free preparedness content and I'll be making more of it. So today I'm talking about part one of my whole theory of preparedness, and that is you plan in concentric circles. Now, if you're someone who's gonna be joining our five day level up preparing challenge, then you're gonna get some cool worksheets and I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of daily live videos all about each step in the process, especially as we are looking at a potential lockdown in the next couple of weeks. I think if you can take advantage of this and run with it now, you're going to be really well set up. Now, if you are interested in the five day challenge, there will be a link down in the description description so that you can sign up for it and I can start sending you all the details. It's going to run February 5th to the 10th. I think I'll have all the dates down below, but it is going to be a challenge in which I walk with you every single day through how to build a basic preparedness plan. Now this is going to be great for beginners if you're brand new to emergency preparedness and you're super overwhelmed, but if you're someone who's been at it for a little while, but you want to have a tool to help you find the gaps in your preparedness or to plan that next level, I'm going to be here to help you level up. That's the whole, the whole plan is that you can level up. So if you're starting at zero, we're going to level it up to level one. If you're starting at level 10, we're going to level it up to level 11. We're just going to keep leveling up because my whole theory of emergency preparedness is that you build concentric circles or layers out and out and out. And you start with the most basic and the most likely scenarios. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The first thing you should do is you should make a list of the three to five most likely scenarios scenarios that you are going to face. Now I want to start with saying that it's not sexy to prepare for things that are common, right? Like it's much more sexy to prepare for zombies or an EMP or a nuclear disaster. Like those things are much sexier to prepare for. I mean, buying a gas mask makes you feel like a prepper queen or king or whatever your royal title preference is. The point being that you feel powerful when you invest in cool and unusual gear. I know that I do anyway. The problem is the life likelihood of me actually needing a full face gas mask is thin, is slim. I mean, even with this major respiratory pandemic, a gas mask actually isn't necessary. An N95 mask or even a cloth mask will serve me pretty well. So if that's the case, what's the best place to start? Well, in my opinion, it's going to be starting with the three to five most likely scenarios that you personally are going to face. Then once you have a nice base foundation that's going to cover you in all major sectors for those three to five base scenarios, you start building out. You can then save up to purchase specialty gear. You can then layer your preparations by going from 30 days to 60 days to 90 days and so on. Basically, whatever works for your family and your budget, you can start layering either layering up if you like that or layering it in concentric rings. That's how I think of it, like a tree. Like you're layering these concentric rings and your base is what's going to get you through a 99% of all major scenarios. Now there's always going to be exceptions, right? Um, any kind of major catastrophe where you're displaced is going to mean all of your shelter in place preps are basically going to become useless unless you can pack them in your car and get them out of there. So of course there's those scenarios to think about, but we're planning for the most likely scenarios and then you're going to layer out from there. So grab yourself a piece of paper. It can be the back of a bill. It can be a notebook, whatever you got going on. Grab yourself a piece of paper and something to write with and make a list of those three to five scenarios that you yourself might be facing. Now different categories of these scenarios could be natural disasters like storms, floods, fires, earthquakes, anything that mother nature could throw at you. You just have to say what is most likely for your particular area. I also want to add a caveat that I'm filming this in the winter and so here in the United States if you live in certain areas winter weather all by itself could become a scenario you have to plan for whereas other parts of the country summer weather all by itself could be something you have to plan for. So think about just seasonal patterns that themselves can become quite challenging. The second area you want to plan for is personal crisis. This can manifest in a lot of different ways, but the most likely are things like job loss, you know, prolonged job loss or furloughs, which some people are already facing, um, a personal prolonged illness for yourself or a family member that's going to take 
money assets as well as uh, human labor assets to care for the sick family member or some type of personal catastrophe like your house catches on fire or you're getting to a major car accident that you have to pay for or something of that nature where it's an accident, it's unforeseen, um, it's not affecting the entire community, it's really only affecting you or your family, but it still is causing a crisis for you. The third major area to consider is going to be man-made or human-made crises. Now this is things like the electrical grid going down because of neglect or intentional <laughs> problems, right? This could mean problems with the food delivery system because human people are in charge of that and if truck drivers don't feel like driving that could cause a problem for you. It could mean things like civil unrest, particularly if you live in an urban area. All these things have varying degrees of likeliness depending upon where you live, your particular stage of life, your season, right? All of this kind of snowballs together. And so before you do anything, knowing what is most likely, those three to five, maybe even 10 if you want to be extra, scenarios that you think are most likely are going to help you narrow your focus so that you can actually take bite-sized steps that are helping you actually make progress. I know for myself when I first got into preparedness for myself, right, I was no longer with my family and I was preparing on my own. I was overwhelmed because a lot of the people that I watched on YouTube and I read their blogs were talking about EMPs and missile attacks and um, total grid down scenarios and how you needed to have a lot of gear and a basement full of water water and food and I lived in an apartment in, and didn't have anywhere to store anything except for like under my bed and so I thought oh no like what am I gonna do and I spent a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of emotional energy worrying and not having a proactive plan. As I got older and I realized that the world wasn't gonna fall apart tomorrow I was able to look back and make really thoughtful plans that have allowed me to spend money strategically, spend time strategically, and spend a emotional investment strategically so I wasn't running around like a chicken with my head cut off if you know what I mean. Now as you look at your major scenarios you should write you should start making a list for all the things all the major areas that you would need to cover to prepare for each one of those scenarios. Now a lot of them are gonna have things that overlap things like first aid and medicine, food and water, shelter, sanitation, right? All scenarios are probably going to require that you have a plan in place for those major sort of areas of preparedness. It's gonna be things like if you live in a cold climate, do you need a generator for heat? If you live in a super hot climate, do you need a generator for air? Are you someone who lives with a chronic illness? Are you going to need to plan one to three to six months ahead for your chronic illness medication? Do you have a boatload of children? Are you going to need to plan what happens if you need to evacuate with your little, you know, little league team worth of kids? All of these are gonna be dependent upon your particular situation, which is why a plan that's just sort of handed to you that doesn't have these particulars isn't always useful. If you live in Arizona, for example, you're going to plan in a very different way. You're probably going to plan for drought and you're probably going to be able to get a lot more usage out of solar panels than someone like me that lives in West Virginia, where we don't really have to plan for drought because we have a lot of rain because of the way weather patterns hit the mountains where I live. I'm on the rainy side of the mountains and we don't get a lot of sun. So what Solar panels, while useful, aren't going to get me nearly as far as somebody who lives in Arizona. So those are the sorts of things to keep in mind, those nuances, those particularities. I am not planning for a tornado, but if you live in Oklahoma, you sure as Hades better have a tornado plan. Now that you have your big master list, it can be as messy or as tidy as you want, I want you to make a big mark through areas that you have already got some preps in place. Now maybe they're not fully fleshed out, right? Maybe you have only two weeks worth of water and you want to get to two months. You can make a note of that, but mark through the fact that you've started your water preparedness. Mark through the fact that you've started your first aid or your food storage preparedness. Look at all the areas where you haven't started your preparedness. Now you have a very concrete plan. If you have zero plans in place for an evacuation kit and you live somewhere where wildfires are possible, that should be at the top of your list, right? If you're someone who has zero plans in place for sanitation and you live in an apartment complex where if the plumbing goes out, you you are going to have a problem, that should maybe be elevated to the top of your list. This allows you to really focus in on the most important aspects of your preparedness plan. You can let go of the need to buy all the cool gear that you see online. I know that there is a lot of very cool gear. I have a whole list of things I'm saving up for. 
but you can spend your time, your money, and your mental and emotional energy on the preparedness that's gonna move your needle. Your preparedness needle is not the same as my preparedness needle. And for me to just give you 10 things to do is a little bit unfair because you might be in a very different place. I might say go prep a bunch of stuff for kids and if you don't have any at home, that's not useful to you. Now, once you have this base layer, then you can layer out. Once you've gone through this list of, I, you know, you could even do this with one or two major things and then layer three and four and then five and six. But once you have this base layer, then you can say, okay, I feel really comfortable at 30 days. Maybe the next base layer is getting to 60 days or 90 days to cover all these basic preps. Perhaps for you, it's saying, okay, I have a nice base layer for the top three to five natural disasters and emergencies I think I'm going to face. Now I want to add in what happens if that one big bad that I'm most terrified of happens, right? I know a lot of friends of mine um, on the West Coast are afraid of the big earthquake, right? Not the little rumbles. We're talking about the 1906 level big earthquake. Now that's not the most likely scenario, but it's certainly a likely one. So that would be the next layer of preparedness and that would probably require evacuation plans, it would require really robust go kits, it would probably require some kind of um, evacuation secondary location kind of thing, maybe even equipping your vehicle with something, but that shouldn't be the first thing you do. The first thing you should do is that base layer. Then what's the next layer? Then what's the next layer? You'll find that over the course of one, two, even three years, you can build up a truly, a truly remarkable preparedness plan, as well as preparedness layers where you know what you have, you know how to use what you have, and you can feel confident the entire time. Having a year supply of freeze dried food that you don't know how to cook isn't really going to help you. Like, yes, you can just pour water on it, but what if it gives your entire family stomach distress? Now you have food that makes you sick right? So what you want is to constantly be familiarizing yourself with that base layer and then the next layer and then the next layer. So if you ever need to call upon those layers, you can be calm and confident that you can use them in any crisis. I hope this video has got you excited and motivated. I hope that you have some notes in place because I know that this makes me really excited. And I hope that you sign up for our five day level up challenge. It is gonna be linked down below. I'm so excited to be bringing this to you. We're gonna be in the Facebook group. I'm gonna be doing five days of live videos. I'm gonna be taking your questions. We're gonna be walking through the worksheets and we're gonna be building out these concentric layers of a plan. So if you are brand new to emergency preparedness, if you have somebody who is interested and they're a little bit nervous about getting involved in emergency preparedness. They don't want apocalyptic, you know, doom and gloom voices in their head. They're a little too anxious for that. Have them sign up for this. I don't do doom and gloom. I'm here for calm and confidence. And I want to bring this to everybody who needs it. It's so important for me to spread this message of calm and confidence. So you sign up, share with your friends who need it, share with your family who needs it, share with your frenemies who need it. We're going to be in the Facebook group the first week of February, and I'm going to be bringing you worksheets and workshops. So we're going to be getting this plan in place so that you can be moving that needle every single day, every single week, moving that needle forward so that you can be calm and confident in every crisis. I hope you guys are all doing well and I will see you in the next video. Bye.